put it on live on YouTube. So the people who aren't uh, watching through Zoom who want to see it on YouTube can simply just sit back and watch the class. And then it'll be automatically recorded and saved for later. <clears throat> there we go. Now we should have everybody alive and ready to go. If anybody has a in the background on YouTube, you'll get a little double extra shot. But I want to welcome you. I, for anybody who doesn't know me, um, I'm Gene Kamarmi, and I'm the at least for now, the educational chair for the Green Valley Camera Club. And I'm the guy that kind of, uh, I'm the cheerleader. I get people to, to do classes and to sponsor activities and encourage them thusly. And we kind of go from there. Uh, we have given a class every winter, I think probably the past 18 years. The first time we gave this big winter class it was uh, the camera club didn't even have a, a place that was permanently ours. And we were over in the East Center and we offered a 10 week camera class and things have changed over the years. If you'll notice now it's a photography class because a huge number of people are using uh, phones for their uh, cameras now you know the principles are all the same but people are using them um in fact i don't know how many of the people who are in this beginning class are using uh, phones and i don't know how many of you are brand new to the camera club because this class is one of the gateways where people come in so i'm going to Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm learning some experiences here. Anyway, we're all set up and we will find out. I will send a little note out to everybody where you can let me know um, if you are brand new to the um, camera club and we'll kind of play it by ear from there. Um, and in terms of the, which product you use, whether you're using a phone or you're using a camera, uh, we can work on that without any problem. Let, I've got a little kind of quick presentation I want to share with you guys. Let me kind of just open it. I'm going to share a screen in a minute. Um, we'll get you started. Okay. And share screen, Gene. Oops, wrong one. Why am I? This might. Anyway, finally, good Lord, I'm starting to worry myself here. All right. So we have our big winter class going in. I'm just going to talk in the background. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to, the whole purpose of today's session, the first one, is an orientation to the camera club. We want you to know what's available, what's going on, and what's going to be in this class. And we're just going to share it with you. We have a short video that I'm going to show you that was made by um, the local U of A PBS station a few years ago. It just gives you an overview of the, the camera club. The next three sessions, the next three weeks, are going to be the basics of camera use. We have so many people who are both new to the club or are new to the experience and their immediate question always says, well, I don't know how to use my camera. I'm using it on my phone, I'm confused. So we thought, well, you know what we'll do? We'll run through a really basic um, camera, cl camera class. So we've locked out, um, we have somebody who's gonna do uh, a three session course. And so the next three Wednesday afternoons at 1.30, will be the basic camera use class. They will be live here on Zoom, they will be live on YouTube, and they will be recorded on YouTube so that you can come back and find who with them later. Um, when you get done with that basic camera class and you actually probably know how to use your 
throwing her a camera to some extent, I like to kid about it. You know, I've had this beautiful Canon DSLR and I have an Android phone and somebody oh, said, well, do you use all the manual settings on, on your Canon camera? And I said, well, sometimes I just turn it to A for awesome pictures. And sometimes I turn it to P for perfect pictures. I said, and once in a rare while, I do something different. And my phone is pretty much the same way. I click the camera on it. I might make a minor adjustment very periodically, but that's kind of it. So maybe all of us, what I'm saying, just could use those three sessions on basic camera use. Then we get done with that. We have somebody who's going to um, do one of the classes that will be actually the fifth week will be on a fine uh, will be on composition because composition is probably equally as important as to using the camera and then after that we're going to have a session on multimedia um brian's here today and i'm going to get to him in a couple minutes he'll tell you a little bit about it but generally speaking uh multimedia is latin for many cables and you plug lots of stuff together and then audio and video and and, and still photos and everything all comes together to make this glorious presentation that takes most people's breath away. Um, a lot of people were really missed that we couldn't do this class live. Originally, we had scheduled this Wednesday afternoon session for a kind of hybrid uh, a session. And quite frankly, this last COVID scare really screwed with us a little bit. And as the enrollment dropped down and I had instructors that just didn't want to do it and things got a little shaky. So we just had to make a judgment call somewhere. At my suggestion, the board decided that maybe we'll just do it as a Zoom class. And quite honestly, I, I think that's gonna work fine, but there's some things we can't do as a Zoom class. I want everybody who took this basic big winter class to be able to make a really nice print from one of their pictures. And I want you to be able to mount that print on foam core board so that we can hang it up and put it in displays and do some really neat things with it. So we are going to make some arrangements the last couple of weeks of class for groups of us to meet in person. I'm not sure exactly how. I'm looking at the numbers, we can just simply say, you know, half the people come one day, half the other, and we'll make a print and we'll mount them up, and you guys are going to be all great. Um, at the end, maybe the eighth or ninth week, I just want to have a little overview of photo editing, because for most of us, I'm going to say probably half or more than half of what goes into the final product is done on an editor on the computer, not just in the camera. Back in the old days, everything was done on film. It was done in the camera. It was pretty simple. You got a good picture, you didn't. Now you can go out and you can take a picture and you can say, eh, I wish that was this or that. And you can change it. You can make it into something it wasn't. So this is basically our schedule. Um, let me move you one. I'm gonna show you this video. Yeah. Hey, Gene, we're not getting the sound. You aren't getting the sound? No. All right. We'll check for you. Yeah, everybody shuts your, if everybody will shut your mics down.
Jean, you might have to start over and make sure the box is uh, checked for share sound and optimized video. All right, we will do that. I'm going to stop the share and we'll start it again. Oh. Hang on a second. Thank you. Um, should, we, should I click mute? I'm muting my audio. Share your screen, share sound, optimize for video. Thank you very much, Chuck. I appreciate it. We're on a roll here. And we'll start that video over again. About that, you guys. Any experience of the guy in charge here? First of all, I didn't want to come to Arizona when I retired. I wanted to go to Florida because hey, my you guys all hear it now. Florida, but my husband suggested we try Arizona. I was here Correct. two days. We do. How can you not okay. love the mountains? How can you not love the desert? We're retired. You're used to having a full day. I don't want to say it gives you something to do, but if you've got an interest, it's a way to express yourself and do things. And the and Green Valley Camera Club offers things to everybody and it, it keeps you busy. Two other Rons just bought the P600. Yeah, it's, it's a good print. This is better. Really? Colors are better, more saturated. Our club has been around a really long time. I'm going to be wrong when I say how long, but it's like over 20 years. And a lot of these guys have been the original members of the club. And um, so they've known each other a really long time. A lot of them are really, really good uh, photographers. Uh, is there any way you can get those people out of the background? Yes, but I'm lazy. I like the people in the background. This was what we call Photo SIG. SIG is a special interest group. And they meet every week, Tuesday morning. Each person brings up to five photos to share. Some of them are really great, and some of them are just like show and tell from their last trip they went on. But um, we uh, are theoretically supposed to give a little feedback. It's like we're gentle. Yours? Yes, mine. Are those flowers? Hi. <laughs> are you drunk? Special interest group where people bring their shots, the group critiques everybody else's pictures in jest and in seriousness, depending on the level of who the person is. The wind up there was blowing about 30 miles an hour at the time. How far are you from them at this point? At that point, uh, actually, I'm using my 600, so... That wasn't it. I'm a ways, ways away, but they ended up coming right up to us. I like to travel, and I just came back from taking photographs of the polar bears up in Churchill, Manitoba. My wife says, will you look at the bears and put the camera down? It gives you an impetus to go to places where you may not normally go to be able to get some images to bring back to show to friends and whatnot. We try hard to get the entire range of skill levels here. We think we're one of the biggest camera clubs, period. I don't know for sure, but you have so many varieties of interest, uh, you're not going to find any one person generally that goes to all of the activities. So we have enough to make 867 people happy. Our goal is to get to a thousand. <laughs> we do a lot of things besides education. We do field trips out in the community. Okay, now everybody look up between so we can see you. Now we're going to take several. Cheese. And the famous one, what is it? Cheeseburger. No, sex. <laughs> I think we are ready to get started. The tour should last about an hour. Everybody ready to go? Yeah. Awesome. So let's go ahead and go on inside. You've never seen a younger bunch of old people in your life. <laughs> they might, on some given days, walk circles around you. The Grevy zebra is very, is very highly endangered. It is one of the most endangered species in the African savanna. More endangered than lions and elephants and all of those. Well, today was a field trip uh, that I arranged called Behind the Scenes for the zoo. And this gives them a chance to uh, see some of the things the public can't see and they get to pet the rhino. One at a time or a few at a time we can come up and touch. I can't promise how long she's going to stay here. So if you want to touch her, right now is the best time to do it. And we're going to stay away from her head. 
I take them on a lot of different uh, field trips. We've done things like roller derby. I've gone to several ranches. I have a mystery trip every year for them. Can't tell you where it is, because I'd have to kill you. There will be four photo opportunities inside. We have some animals waiting for us. I'm just kind of learning. I haven't traveled very much. I bought a new camera and uh, I wanted to learn how to do uh, photography better than what, you know, point and shoot would do. I've always taken pictures, but we always differentiate in the camera club between taking pictures and taking photographs because there's a difference. So I think when you spend some time editing it and, and getting it ready for production, I think you become a photographer. So I'd say all of my life I took pictures. Probably the last five years I've become a photographer. Well, when with digital, you, you, the, the cost is, is free. I mean, you can take a thousand pictures and throw away 999 of them, and if you got one. You can review your photos, although I seldom do that when I'm out on a shoot. Usually I go home, I can't wait to get them on my computer so I can look at them. It's popular because I think it gives people the opportunity to see places they wouldn't see normally. And the camera club here is incredible. The one in Green Valley, it's one of the largest ones in the country. So you have some incredibly talented people, incredibly talented. People who may not be an artist with pastels or oils or things like that, feel they can get a piece of that artistic credibility themselves with a photograph. Somebody admired one of my photographs and they said, I'd really like to buy that. And I said, really? And I have a wonderful business going. So I sell photographs all over. I've had exhibits all over. A teacher of fourth graders. <laughs> Who knew? Um, that's kind of neat. It gets... It's an older video, but it says everything that we could possibly say to you about, um, how do I say, uh, anything we could say to you about the camera club. It sort of gives us a really great summary. Um, and before we get started with some of this other stuff, I, I want to run through some things with you, just a little overview of what we got going on in the camera club. And then I want to introduce you to some of the officers and people that do a lot of the real grunt work. In the past, the camera club offered a lot of quote unquote classes. Those were like, I'm gonna say high school adult education classes or community college classes where people came in, sat down, somebody gave a demonstration or a lecture and they left. Um, over the last few years, because of um, COVID, because of Zoom classes, and just because of changing educational strategies, the club has changed quite a bit. We don't offer as many quote unquote classes, but we've moved to something called special interest groups. It's almost like having um, a, cl a, a club within the club. Uh, people are interested in some narrower aspect of photography and they can meet periodically with other people that have that same interest. They can share information, technique, classes. Um, it's, it has worked out wonderfully well for us. The attendance is great in these special interest groups and we have them on a bunch of topics. Uh, in a couple minutes, I'll introduce you to some of the SIG facilitators. They are the people that are responsible for, um, if we're doing them on Zoom, logging on every week and getting the class started, hopefully, like me, not screwing it up when they first started. But um, we have one in multimedia, which I mentioned, and it's one of our best attended SIGs. They meet every other Monday morning. And they will have 15 to 30 people online, alive, and then they will I look back on Facebook a week later, and then there's another 10 or 20 people that have watched it on Facebook. So the attendance is pretty good, uh, surprisingly good. We have uh, black and white 
Sig Wendell Warner does that. And uh, it's interesting because I've never done much black and white for the last 20 years, but it's kind of good to go there to that class once in a while and just look and see what impressive things can be done without color. We have a Photoshop element SIG that is done on Thursdays. And it's, it's, it's almost uh, best described as an ongoing question, answer, and uh, demonstration uh, special interest group using Photoshop elements. And then the Gregory does it, it's wonderful. Um, if you're interested in photo editing, you just go there and hang around. Eventually by osmosis, a lot of the techniques of Photoshop will stick with you. And we're starting a new one uh, next week. I think the, uh, it's hit me with your best shot. We're going to ask people to bring a few of their best digital pictures to this SIG. And the rest of the people in the group will make comments. This is a brand new or restart of a SIG. And uh, we haven't ironed all the details out yet, but when the people that are interested meet, um, they will work out all the details. Look on the calendar at the club site and um, hopefully take a serious shot at putting one or more of your pictures in. In fact, I'm going to drive you crazy over the next five or six weeks trying to get you to go to that SIG at least once. I'd like to see everybody that's in this big winter class, whether you've done this before or not, uh, give it a shot. Stop in there and hit me with your best shot. Drop a couple pictures off, see what happens. We have a art photography SIG that absolutely is mind-blowing these people do oh my god they do some things with photography that i've only imagined um we have a bird photography sig uh, people who are interested in bird photography and a bunch more we can have a new sig on any topic that our members are interested in uh, anytime that we can get a facilitator to run the sig if we want to do them in person, we can use um, rooms at the club. If we want to do them online through Zoom, we have two different Zoom accounts and we can have multiple classes going on. One of the other big things that the camera club offers are field trips. Uh, Sue Rock is in charge of field trips and we probably have, if you'll go on the website and look, there are probably a dozen or more maybe as many as 20 up and coming field trips and all the information is on there. We have several bird and nature trips. We very shortly have a couple versions of my favorite uh, camera club field trip, my personal favorite, which is Tucson windows and doors. And the um, uh, group leaders, the field trip leaders will take you into Tucson and to various neighborhoods where they're just the neatest windows and doors you can take pictures of. And the camera club has gone there so often and given pictures away afterwards that all the neighbors in the neighborhoods know us. And when we come, they absolutely invite us to windows and doors. I was there one day last year and this gentleman came out with his dog and he said, look, you have to see the old windows I have in my backyard. I collect them. And he took us through the house into the backyard and let us take pictures of all these antiques that uh, he had stored. So it's kind of interesting. We have a couple of historic tours, a Presidio tour coming up. We have an Equine Voices tour. A lot of people don't know that we have a horse rescue sanctuary in the area and they allow us to go in and take pictures. We have a tour coming up to Bisbee and the club has a committee whose sole job is to design and organize field trips. And there are continual list of new ones coming up. If you haven't walked into the club room, you need to. We have all the equipment anybody could ever want. Now, normally, if we were doing this class in the, in the Kino room, I would open up the doors take you out and walk you around the room and show you all of this equipment so you know what it was. 
I can't do that today. It's just a, a long way from my house to the club. But I welcome you to go over there. We're open every morning from nine till noon. Stop in. The monitor that's on duty will take you around and show you all the equipment. Uh, right, I monitored yesterday and I was bored to death. So I was more than willing to give tours. And so are most of the other monitors. But we have a slide digitizers where you can take all your own slides and make them into a digital files. Same thing with photographs. You can transfer your old eight millimeter film over on, onto um, a digital versions. You can transfer those old VHS videos over. We have gorgeous Epson printers. You can make huge, I think it's a, a 17 by 20 inch big prints and they're absolutely top quality. You can make them there for a very nominal fee. You're just paying the cost of the ink and paper. Um, we have tons of matting and mounting equipment. We have a complete studio that you can use. There is just a ton of equipment and if any of you have skills on using any of these equipment, any of this equipment, you're more than welcome to contact me. I'm sure I can set you up a class or a special interest group in a heartbeat. Um, software, we have probably 20 computers set up in the workroom at the club. And we're site licensed with almost all of the Adobe products. So everything that has to do with photo editing, video production um, programs that would cost you hundreds of dollars every year are yours to use for free there. You just come in, sit down, and use the programs. We have programs like Smart Photo Editor, which is an artificial intelligence a photo editor, assisted photo editor. It's one of the latest programs on the market. Affinity, which is right up there. We have a whole SIG that meets, that uses Lightroom. We have a Luminar editor and probably every other piece of software that you can imagine. They're there. You can look on the top of the computers. You can see what they are. I just wanted to kind of give you a general overview. I'm going to temporarily stop the share here for a minute and accept my apology for screwing it up there at the beginning. I'm on a a brand new computer, it's my first day using it. So it's a little awkward right at this point, but we'll get used to it. Um, what I thought I'd like to do now, if it's at all possible, is to introduce you to some of the people that are, uh, I don't know how to say this, movers and shakers in the, in the camera club, uh, board officers, uh, SIG group leaders. I let them all say a little word or give you a little overview of what's going on. Um, I see Danny's here. Danny uh, Venezuela is our um, club president. He, uh, how do I say this so nice to Danny? Um, nobody wanted to be club president very much. And Danny was the acting president. And we had a big board meeting and Danny had to use the men's room. And he got up and he left. And while he was gone, we made him president. And he didn't say, that's not true, but close. <laughs> he didn't say anything about it. But Danny, would you like to take a couple minutes and talk to us? You have to turn your mic on. Thank you, Gene. I just wanted right. to say uh, hello and thank you for being a part of this class. I think you'll enjoy it. Even if you've taken it before, there's always something new to learn. And at the Camera Club, we're trying to figure out how to best serve your needs. And so, uh, you know, Zoom is one thing that is new to us. It just took off at the right time when COVID hit. Uh, so uh, we are looking for feedback from you about what we can do better or what we can do new. So please don't hesitate to contact me or any of the board member at any time. Uh, one of the things we're doing later this month, you'll, you'll receive an email to vote on some uh, changes to our bylaws, which will bring us a little more up to date with uh, us being able to participate in board meetings uh, via video since we don't do uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one board meetings anymore. So you'll look for that in the next couple of weeks and appreciate your support on that. And uh, I have a great crew of board members and, and volunteers and coordinators that keep the club going. I'm just the figurehead up here. And uh, if it's not for them, 
uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So I appreciate that. And thank you, Gene. Okay. And I forgot to mention to everybody, if you look up in the corner of your Zoom screen, right-hand side, there's a little thing that says view. And if you turn speaker view on, it's really perfect because then just uh, the person, you will just see the person who's speaking. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing this in, in any special order, so I don't want anybody to be <laughs> offended. But I want to get Claudia next just for a general reason. Claudia's waving and smiling. Claudia is um, the badge lady. And... Um, so many times as you come into the, the camera club, nobody knows who's who. And we do have badges and you can get them and they're available and then at the club and you can put your badge on anytime you come in. Claudia, you want to unmute your mic and uh, then talk to us? No, you're still muted. We got to get there. How's that? Okay. Yes, I am new to Zoom. So... Thank you for helping with me with this. But anyway, yes, you know, I've been a member of the club for about five years or six years by now. And I and I, I had been coming in and everyone was so friendly with each other. And I just kind of hung back because I didn't know anyone's name. And everyone seemed to know each other but me. Of course, you always feel like that when you're new. Um, but a few years in, but I and I began to learn some names. And then um, I think at the end of 2018, I decided to speak up and I said, hey, why don't we have uh, name tags? Well, you know what happens when you ask the question, you end up doing it. So I've had uh, a lovely time. I found a beautiful uh, vendor who actually custom made our name tags. And if you could, I don't know if you could see it. Is that showing? Yes, you're good. Okay. It is, she actually, it's, the, if you're familiar with printing, it's uh, the dye sublimation process. And she has our camera toting um, cactus, our own logo right on the name tag. Now I call them a name tag so that it's different than the uh, GVR badge. So that with the badge, you, you can't read the person's name. And so with our name tag, it's right out there, as you can see. And it's so easy to walk up to someone and get to know them. And of course, if you're new or if you've been here a long time, we'd all like to know you by name when we get together. And we still get together, even in this time of COVID. We have, as Jean mentioned, our field trips, which are fun. And there is, when you come into the club to use the equipment, and you'll see other people there. Hopefully, there'll be some more people soon. And uh, when we do get back together, it makes it so much easier. We normally, we have three big meetings a month, the speaker series, the showtime, and travelogue. And that's when we all meet in person. And it just makes it so lovely to, to uh, get to remember everyone's name. So uh, there are, I wanted to tell you, there are three places you can order them. It takes about two weeks for me to get them from the vendor. If you renew or join, you will get a notice about how to order a name tag. Then on our main website, when you sign in, um, there is a place on there where you, where you can order them. And uh, also thanks to Neil Wickay, uh, he put a lovely piece in there uh, about ordering name tags, how to make a name for yourself in the club. And so he also has a link in there. So they are $8 and they're beautiful for the price. And we want to get to know you. So I'll look for your name. I've got all your right. names down, all of you. I'm watching. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you, Claudia. You can shut your mic back up. We'll will. keep the we'll keep the sound going. Um, I'm I'm just looking down the, the the list of people that are signed in. I know um, I know the lavenders are online somewhere. Oh, here they are, Brian and Susan. Um, I want to tap them next just because 
this is a compliment, you guys. They are some of the most interesting people in the camera club. And they have the absolutely neatest special interest group that they sort of facilitate on and off. And I'd like just to take a couple minutes and let them give you a little spiel on um, what multimedia is all about. Brian, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, sorry, Susan couldn't be here. She's off on a mission of mercy with a neighbor. Uh, all right, uh, Jean talked about uh, getting everybody to print a photograph. And uh, I don't know, you could have a nice little display in the camera club or you can hang it on the wall at home. What if you've got 500 photographs? Well, this is, this is how we do 500 photographs. It's multimedia. Uh, whenever you go to Showtime or Travelog, you're watching multimedia presentations. So we have a little short film. It runs for about four minutes that talks about some of the aspects of multimedia. Hasn't been updated in a while uh, because we're waiting for things to calm down and then we can get the meeting times and places correct. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about meeting times and places after this film runs. So uh, bear with us for four minutes here and uh, we'll watch this. And yes, share sound. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself, what is multimedia and what can it do for me? Multimedia can be many things, so let's take a few minutes to talk about what it can be. First of all, it is not a Latin phrase that means many cables, many geeks, or many dollars. What it is, is a combination of two or more of the following. First of all is text, just the good old written word in one form or another. Next, we refer to anything consisting of sound, such as the spoken word or music as audio. If you are responding to prompts on a computer screen like edpuzzle.com, we call that interactivity. Next, who among us has never seen a Pixar cartoon? They have mastered the art of animation. And be it either old film or new digital, if it's a moving picture, we call that video footage. Finally, does anyone in here ever take a photograph? Of course we do. So, when you put together two or more of these elements, you have a multimedia presentation, like the one you're watching now. Let's talk a minute about the hardware and software of multimedia. Yes, you can spend $50,000 and up on a single camera, but that really isn't necessary. Our members have used cell phones, point and shoots, DSLRs, camcorders, and more to make videos. Beyond that, it's nice to have a tripod, but even that isn't a hard and fast rule. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Software? There are several versions available for the Mac or PC that you can use, and they range from relatively simple to pretty complicated. All of these software packages are available in the Camera Club, and the club even offers training on some of them. If you want to have your own copy at home, the software ranges from free to, hmm, you better check with your significant other before breaking out the credit card. All right. So now you're ready to make a Cameras. multimedia presentation. Ah. What do we do with these? Our SIG is working with the Camera Club to do educational videos. Several of us like to support local nonprofits with free video productions. We enjoy sharing our trips, projects, and vacations with each other. And these are not the typical vacation slideshow you suffered through as a kid. We also put together what we call gallery shows of our photographs. And we have fun looking at how other video makers do things. Yes, we really like learning from others. If you can dream up a video, you really can do it. Whether for friends or family, 
a Camera Club Showtime, or Travelogue, we enjoy sharing our stories. Memories. You're talking about memories. Why, yes. Yes, we are. So many photographs, so many video clips. There are so many ways to share them. But how do you get started? As we just mentioned, our Camera Club has all the tools you need, from computers to scanners and software to classes, plus the knowledge and support you can find in the SIGs. With these tools, you can turn those photos and videos, old or new, into something fun. So come join us on Thursday mornings. We'll look forward to seeing you in the Multimedia Special Interest Group. That's the, uh, the film. Now I'd like to keep taking over the screen and uh, take you to the uh, Camera Club's website. And there's a reason for that. Okay, uh, Gene, are you looking at the Camera Club website? Nope. Okay, somebody stop me if we're not on the right screen. Oh, you're on um, the screen. Okay, then um, to sign up for the Zoom meetings for the Multimedia SIG, uh, go to events and down under special interest groups and you scroll down a little bit and there we are. And that's where you register. For the session that you're going to have on multimedia, I want you to go to the SIGS portion in the Multimedia Special Interest Group. And you can find a lot of information here. Amongst the things you can find under educational resources, if you go down a little ways, you will find the intro to multimedia. And this is the detailed outline that you will need for the multimedia session. You can just download it, print it, and, and you'll be all ready to go. And with that, we'll stop share and go back to the screen here. Uh, I would like to encourage you to come to the multimedia SIG. If you do a show or you have a video that you've made that you want to show at the SIG, by all means, um, that's, what, that's what they're there for. We will, we will set a dial on the, the level of criticism. <laughs> you can get everything from a one, which is, well, that was lovely, dear, all the way up to 10, where we just beat you to death with detail, if needed. Uh, we have had people walk in with their, their first gallery show, and they show it, and we go, yay, because it was terrific. Um, every one of us can learn from constructive criticism and that's all that's allowed nobody gets mean there's no you know bloody bodies piled in the corners afterwards uh, I know there are people out here in the uh, the class today that have been to the the multimedia sig uh, sessions and they could tell you the same thing so uh, unless anybody has any questions or Gene you want me to emphasize anything else um, that's what I have for you today and we'll look forward to seeing you at the multimedia session here in a few weeks. Jane, your uh, sound is not on. Jane, your sound is off. Jane, turn on your microphone. My goodness! There we go. Now there you go. <laughs> God, God, I am a little dis. How do I say this? For those of you who switched, my uh, new computer switched up the Windows 11, and the little buttons on the bottom of the screen are in different places. And I'm busy watching that instead of doing what I'm supposed to be doing and watching the Zoom screen. So I kind of just man, it's fun. It makes everybody feel better when the guy that's supposedly in charge doesn't know what he's doing. Um, <laughs> but I will prepare or try to prepare some notes and the links that Brian mentioned, I will put in the notes and you'll probably get them as an email in the next few days uh, to make it just a little tiny bit easier to do this. 
Um, Wait a sec, Gene. I was hoping to tempt them into going to the multimedia SIG portion of the website and wander around in there and, and oh. maybe learn something. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll let them do that. You know, in <laughs> education, Brian, that's called the discovery method. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. Is there anybody else that's a board member? I have one more person. Uh, to kind of finalize up today. Um, but I, I, I want to stop here and pause for a minute. I don't know if there are any other SIG group leaders that really, really want to say something. Um, they can let us know. But generally speaking, uh, I think we've kind of, you know, run through enough information for you today to get you really hooked in and say, wow, this camera club has a lot of stuff going on. Now, Brian mentioned um, showing off some of the work that you do. We started off, the club started off by showing still photographs printed and mounted. And we show them in the club rooms. We have displays at almost all of the GVR centers. We have displays at Silver Springs. Uh, there are a couple of restaurants that take our pictures in. So... Uh, people who make prints can hang their pictures up and, and, and or have them hung up and shown around. Um, a big part of photography is ego driven. And you have to be really honest about this. Um, I love it when somebody says, wow, Gene, great picture. It makes me want to go out and shoot some more. So we have the club sponsors some activities that are designed for members to share their works and um, they work out very, very well. They mentioned one, and I was going to have Chuck speak to you. Chuck Hill runs a uh, once a month presentation called Showtime. Uh, but Chuck had another meeting. He's over in my chat room on the side. Chuck had another meeting at two o'clock and he had to leave. But what Showtime is, it's a place where members can present um, slideshows, multimedia presentations, whatever they want to show up. And then we show them in the evening in a theater type setting and all of our club members can watch your productions they're wonderful we had about a hundred people total watch the one a week ago uh it gives you an idea that people are most definitely uh seeing the videos and then besides yeah, besides showtime we have a travelogue series and wow um with all these uh how do I say with COVID and everything else going around, um, a lot of people are reluctant to travel. And I went to the travelogue session the last time. And then my wife said to me, how was it? And I said, you know, I didn't leave the den, but I swear to God, it was like being on a vacation. You know, I got to see all these places that somebody else had gone to and they were so well done. So between the various, I guess the word is show off activities that we have, um, it seems like we get to uh, take our pictures and show them off to other people. But we have a big TV on the wall at the club room, and there are constant um, slideshow of pictures going by. We have a print of the day on the website, and we have plenty of them going on there. Um, I'm just, excuse me a minute. I'm watching people talk to me on the side. Um, share your pictures, talk to us, go to the website. That's probably the biggest place to find everything. And if you're interested in a SIG or a class or anything else, register for it. And the reason I stress that is when you register, you're on the mailing list for that particular group. And then if we have any announcements or anything going on with the group, you will get a message. And that's kind of important to keep up with all the stuff that's going on in the club. So I've given you, or we have given you, this overview of the club. And that was sort of the purpose of what we, we're here for today. We just want everybody, I know some of you are old, experienced club members who have been around forever. And at least a dozen, 10 of you are brand new to the club. So it's kind of interesting in terms of uh, sharing this information with everybody. Now, I still have Mike here. Yeah, Mike, you're still here. Good. Um, I want to, uh, the next three weeks, Mike is going to do a basic camera class with you. 
And before we leave, I'd like to take a couple minutes to have Mike just kind of give you an overview of what's coming up. Can you hear me, Mike? Are you with us? Wave at me. Yeah, there I'm you with go. you. Okay, you're good now. I can hear you. <laughs> it's all yours for a few minutes, if you don't mind. Is that okay? No, not a problem, Jay. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Camera Club, if you're new. If not, uh, uh, nice seeing you come back. Uh, I'm doing the next three weeks on basic photography, and the reason is not because I'm an expert or anything, because uh, I taught for 30 years in adult education. I miss it terribly. So when I get an opportunity to share with people and teach, I usually take advantage of that. In addition to teaching the next three classes, I've been doing the uh, bird photography SIG for about the last three years. And since we've been on Zoom, we've been going year round. So, um, but I kind of fly below the radar uh, amongst uh, the camera club. And uh, I guess I just kind of show up when there's something I feel I can share and help with. Uh, I've been with the camera club since about 2007. I had a break for a couple of years where I wasn't. So I've been around for a while. What we're gonna talk about basically is, is things that maybe you haven't thought at all about. And uh, things like uh, uh, purchasing the right SD card or compact flash card, how to get one that matches your camera speed wise. Also recommendations on uh, purchasing different types of cameras. Uh, on looking at what you should uh, focus on. Uh, decide if you're new to photography, where you really want to go with this. It's going to take time. And contrary to popular belief, I'm going to suggest to newbies uh, that they uh, uh, use the auto mode on their camera for a while. And the most important thing becomes once you've shot your pictures, get them loaded up on your computer into software that can tell you something called the metadata. It's gonna tell you what the camera has done to get that image and will let you eventually grow to the point where you can move to possibly, you know, uh, shutter priority, aperture priority, uh, or let's say um, manual mode. So we're gonna talk about a lot of things like that. And uh, probably one of the most important things to do, I've, uh, I've been shooting now birds mostly since 2007, and I have somewhere upwards of 70,000 pictures. So uh, one of the things uh, I'll discuss is purchasing software or getting free software that will allow you to organize your images. You get a lot of people say, well, I got them organized, okay? But certain software will let you uh, put in a, a keyword and find your pictures in seconds. So uh, that's basically where I'm coming from. Uh, my method is, uh, is probably unconventional uh, compared to most, uh, but uh, I try to keep it light. I try to keep it uh, funny whenever possible and uh, helpfully share. Uh, I'll be sending a uh, fill a copy of the PowerPoint presentation which will have lines to record notes on it and um, uh, a couple of uh, handouts. So uh, one is one that involves uh, uh, the, um, I guess you call it a dictionary of photographer terms. So I look forward to seeing you all next week and hopefully we'll get some more people. And if you're interested in bird photography, uh, my SIG meets on now, it used to be at this time on Wednesdays, now it's Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, on Zoom. Uh, so get an opportunity. Uh, come in and check us out. Uh, it's kind of, uh, I kind of enjoy it. And we share a lot of pictures and make suggestions whenever possible. So uh, that's enough of me babbling on. So Gene, I'll hand it back to you. You there, Gene? Did Gene desert me? Oh, well. Well, nice talking to you. Hopefully Gene's back or somebody else looks like Brian and Susan are up. So go ahead. Uh, no, we already had our bit. Yeah, I, I saw you uh, highlighted there. I don't know where Gene went. So uh, I don't feel in a position to earn uh, to uh, 
uh, in the SIG. Uh, so if there are any questions or anything like that, I'm sure you can uh, use the um, uh, chat to send questions to Gene. Uh, anybody else? Got anything else they want to share? No, is there any other SIG leader or uh, field trip leader that wants to make any comments? No, okay. I think we can wrap it up, uh, Michael. Nobody else wants to, has any questions or anything. And we'll see everybody next week. And appreciate your being here with us and, uh, and participating in this, in this session. Okay. Bye everybody, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.